Hello mate and welcome to another exciting episode of Let's Code Season 4, this time it's personal. And what we're going to do in this episode is we are going to work on the sounds system for our game. Before I get started though, huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So what we have to do is go to our classes file and at the very bottom we're going to add some new stuff. What I'm also going to do is make sure that within the game folder there is an audio folder and if there isn't one we can right click and create a new folder and call it audio with a small a and that's where that's going to live. So the first thing we have to do is go through and decide what we want our audio system to do. Now for me what I want to do is I want to be able to add my audio files to a folder with a specific name and I want the game to do the rest of the hard lifting for me. I don't want to have to keep programming or keep typing out lists of names of files and things like that. It's just going to be too much work. So what we need to do is we need to use the rempy list files function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, list. It's going to call it audio files like so. And we're just going to fill it with nothing. It's going to be an empty list. The next thing we want to do is we want to list or run through the list of all of the files within our game folder. To do that, what we're going to do is use this new command that you guys might not be aware of. We're going to say for Q in. And then we're going to say renpy dot list underscore files common equals false. What we're saying with common equals false is we don't want to list all of the files in the common directory. We just want the files inside the game folder. So that's what we've got there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to say if q dot and it's time for another new command starts with if the game file name starts with audio forward slash, then what we're going to do is we're going to say audio files dot append open brackets q. So what this function is doing, if you hadn't guessed, is we're going to run through every single file in our game folder. And if those files are contained within the audio directory, then we're going to stick them on the end of our audio files list like so. And it's only going to do this once. That's the reason we're doing this outside of our function is because if we did this every single time and we get to the stage where our game has thousands of images or files, it's going to take a very long time to scan through them all. So we only want to do this once at the very start and create the list. So that's what we've got there. OK, so now we need to get into defining our actual function. So what we're going to do, def audio check. And we're going to take in one parameter and it's going to be location. So what's going to happen is as the game loop goes around, every time we go through an iteration of the game loop, it's going to run this check and it's going to feed in the customer, the customer, the, <laughs> the player's location. So there we go. So what we need to do is we need to actually say global audio files. And we need to call the global variation of the audio files because remember that this list is not created within the scope of this uh, function. So we need to tell the function to use this version of that variable and not create its own within the scope of the list or the, the function. We also need to create two local variables. One's going to be called sound list or sow list. And that's going to be an empty list as well. And then we're also going to call muse list. And there we go like so. Now we're going to go through our list of audio files. We're going to say for Q in audio files. We're going to say X. X is just a, another temporary variable we're going to use. And it's going to be Q, i.e. the list, the file name. And it's going to, we're going to shave off the first six characters, which is going to be audio forward slash. We're going to get rid of those. And then we're also going to get rid of the file extension, which is four characters. So we're going to say minus four there, like so. File words. Give that capital W just to keep it separated nicely. Equals. And now we need to split the remainder of the file name up. And we're going to do that. And we're going to use the underscore as our 
uh, split character. So we're going to say x dot split underscore. So what we're going to do when we name our files, the convention we're going to use to name our files, I'm going to skip down a little bit. So my my uh, say, let's say I want a specific piece of music to play when we enter a certain room. So what we're going to do is I'm going to call the file will be muse to tell the game that it's a music file and not an ambient sound file then we're going to say the location so let's say uh, bathroom and then we can call the rest of the file whatever we want really those are the two important pieces of the file name you can have a load of other stuff at the end of it like numbers so you can have zero one if you've got multiple files or something like that and then it's obviously going to end with mp3 and what this code is doing is it's going through identifying all of the files which are contained within let's just go back to the very beginning of this file name audio forward slash so it's finding any files that begin with that and then it's adding them to our audio files list now what we're doing is we're cutting this piece out with the six at the beginning of there we're cutting those four out, so we're left with this. Now what I've done is I've split X into these three different parts. So it's going to use the underscore as the white method of splitting. So it's going to remove that, and it's going to remove that. And then we're left with three variables or three values in the list of file words. Now what we need to do is we need to ascertain whether we're dealing with a music file or an ambient file. So what we do now is we're going to say if file words one equals location. In other words, if we are in the correct location. So we're actually going to need to access um, this variable up here. So whatever we've fed in in terms of the location it was going to now be checked against here. So we're checking that this word here matches the location that we've been fed through in the brackets and file words, goodness me, file words zero equals muse. So what we're saying is if this location matches our first word like this, and if the prefix is mus if it's a music file then we're going to add that to muse list dot append q so we're feeding that entire file name now including the beginning the uh, audio forward slash part so the full file name including the path and the file extension are now appended to our music list now what we need to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to just get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to paste it because we want to check another one. And this time we're going to check if it's going to say ambient. So we're going to have our ambient sound files beginning with AMB underscore instead of MUS underscore. And if it's an ambient file, then we're going to append it to our sounds list instead. Nice and simple. Now what we need to do is because we're telling RemPy to do things with these, we also need to create some default sounds in case we haven't currently got any music or sound files for the location that we're in. So we're going to say if muse underscore list equals nothing, then we'll muse underscore list equals and we're, and we're going to add uh, audio forward slash default underscore music mp3 now you obviously have to have a file called default muse mp3 within your audio folder so if you don't make sure you do because otherwise this is still going to throw up an error when it can't access that file uh, default sound list so what i generally do is have some kind of white noise as my uh, default sound so that the player is not going to notice it or if he does it's going to be you know just a, a very soothing kind of um, room sound rather than some really obnoxious drum and bass or uh, something like that, or uh, dubstep, which seems to be all the flavor at the moment, loud and obnoxious, but uh, we will ignore that. So, and then we're going to say sound list equals 
audio forward slash default sound dot mp3 like so that means that no matter what happens there's always going to be something happening with our sound like so now what we need to do is we need to play the music so we're going to say rempi dot music dot play add a list so it's easy enough to do this what we're going to do it's going to add another set of brackets and we're going to say muse underscore list so we've told rempi it's going to play that entire list because there might be multiple files for one location we're going to send it to a channel we haven't actually defined our audio channels yet we're going to do that next so i'm just going to say channel one is going to be the channel that plays our music it's going to loop in case we run out of music to play so we're just bloody annoying atom thing getting in the way fade out is going to be 1.0 that can be the number of seconds that it takes for it to play or um, to start playing or end playing at the end of the music and then fade in is going to be the amount of time it takes for the music to fade in at the start it just means that if there's an abrupt change in styles of music it's a little less hard to hear and then if changed equals true now this statement is very important if changed is true we don't want every single game loop the music file to start playing again so what we do is we add if changed true what that means is it will only change what's coming out of the sound channel if it's different to what it was already working on so we can keep appending this list or we can keep replaying refilling this list with the same audio files Rempi will not change what it's playing unless it dramatically changes. So as long as we're staying in the bathroom, it won't change the music that's playing. Once we leave the bathroom and go to another location with different music files, then it will change what's being played. That is really important and I think you'll find really freaking useful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play the sound list by just copy pasting this entire thing. And we're going to play that in channel two. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to just add the function to stop the audio and then we'll define our audio channels. So now we're going to say define stop audio. This is a new function. We don't need to feed anything into this because it's going to be a blanket command and all it's going to do is stop the audio files from playing in both channels. So we're going to say rempi.music.stop open brackets channel equals one fade out equals 1.0 so when it stops we just we wanted to give it a little bit of a fade out and not just abruptly stop copy that paste it again and do the same thing for channel two and this is really useful if we're going into a cut scene or something like that um where the video is playing that's got its own audio the music won't automatically stop when we do that so what we need to do is we need to actually have a command that we can call that's going to stop all the audio just before we play a cutscene and then as soon as we're out of the cutscene and we go into another game loop again it'll start playing the music again so yeah a nice blanket command to stop all the audio is great now we're going to come to the very top of our file and the reason we're going to do that is because we want to identify our audio channels kind of pretty much straight away so what we're going to do is we're going to say rempi.music register underscore channel and the channel name is going to be one it's going to be in the mix in music mixer so we're going to say mixer equals music we're going to say loop equals none we already declare the loop when we when we actually play the audio down below so it doesn't really matter what we do here stop on mute that's not a capital m equals true so if we mute the channel then the music will stop playing tight equals false file prefix again it doesn't matter underscore prefix equals nothing there file underscore suffix is nothing there as well buffer q equals true cool just gonna tidy this up a little bit make sure everything's spelled correctly stop on mute it's good file prefix style suffix is good cool so that's our first sound channel defined now we can add another one register channel two this time it's going to be played in a sound mixer 
and then all of the other information is identical. Next thing I would suggest you do is set the values of the volumes here rather than further down the line. So what we do is we're gonna say preferences dot set underscore volume. And on the sound channel, I want the volume to be, I don't know, 0 0.3, because if we don't have it low, it's gonna come out pretty loud. And then it's much the same, we can just copy and paste this line, control C, control V, tap that in. And then we want the sound of our music channel to be, I'm gonna say it's slightly louder, like 0 0.4. And then that is all there is to it, guys. We've created our audio channels, we've set the volume, and then down here, we've created a list of files that all contained within the audio directory of our game folder. And then we're running through that list and we're checking that the file contains the word muse at the beginning. If it does, and we're in the correct location, it will add that to the list of music to be played. And if the same thing applies to the ambient sound effects, which we are going to automatically play. If there's nothing, if we don't have any files that match those criteria, then it's going to just give us some default music and default sound. In fact, I misspelled that. And then it's going to play the music on the music channel, the sound on the sound channel. And then when we call for stop audio, it will just stop everything until we run through the game loop again and call this audio check location here. Now, I'm not going to actually run the game file because I don't have any audio files to run from. But if we were in our game loop, let's pretend that this is in our whilst playing loop. All we'd have to do is start with a pound symbol, audio check, and then let's say we've got a variable called location. All we do is pop that in there like that. And then it will run that function based on the location that we're in and it'll start playing some music. And that's really all there is to it. If you want to stop the music, it's as simple as stop music or whatever we call that uh whatever we call that function i think let's go back to classes it's stop audio so yeah let's just do it right we'd say and all, that's all we'd have to do to stop all of the audio coming out of those two channels so that we could play a cutscene or something thanks very much for watching that guys i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye